here, I could hear um, somebody could really sing. I could hear someone could re- somebody, someone say that was me. <laughs> yeah, quiet. <laughs> okay. Well, we get to try again next Sunday too. <laughs> ah, God, you're so good. Lord, we bless you. I thank you, Lord, for just the ability to lift things up to you and to glorify you. So we bless you today. We thank you. It's you that takes the burdens. And Lord, I ask that even this day, you would pour out your presence on your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Surely come. Sylvia and Angie, come too, please. You can just stand in front of us. No, don't face us. We'll get it. No, not you guys. You guys stand behind her. I'm praying for her. Do you see the kind of day how we need the Holy Spirit here? Huh? Do you see that? that weight and that garment that does not belong to you, I command it to come off now, in Jesus' name, now, and that the anointing come and fill you to what you have been called, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for warring over her right now, and I speak clarity, blessing, and supernatural grace over you in Jesus name there is a step up for you receive the anointing receive that anointing now there is a step up and into receive 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 that it's all over you even right now receive that anointing it breaks yokes it is covering you and it's starting right now Thank you, Father, for the renewing of our mind as well. In Jesus' name, I just speak over you a brand new clarity and a brand new ability to move. In Jesus' name, old things will no longer be able to hold you down. There is some serious anointing on you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ladies, do you have anything? Just receive that. Just receive that. Just receive it. The Lord wars over you. You don't have to. He's the one who wars over you. You don't have to war. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everyone, let's say this. Say, Shirley, we bless you. Amen. Amen. If that spoke to you, you can actually receive that for yourself as well. And do you know how you do that? You say, that's for me. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a we friend we have in technology because I can't find the notes. Oh, I'm ordering from Starbucks. Wow. Okay. No. Hallelujah. We had uh, last Sunday, who was able to join us last Sunday for the Wiener Roast? That was actually, it was a lot of fun. It was just something simple. I think we complicate things. It's just a simple Wiener Roast and a lawn chair, and it was actually really awesome. So um, we are going to do that again. Not tonight, but uh, we we just want to do it more. We want to utilize summer. Who else has seen the yellow leaves? Who else is pretending that you don't see the yellow leaves? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, me too, Autumn. I was Autumn. 
your name, your beautiful name. So we have prayer every Tuesday night um, from 7 until 8. We just try and do for an hour. I would encourage you to come, even if you feel, especially if you feel like you can't pray. Especially you need to be here. We're going to start something at the the last Tuesday of every month. We're asking if you serve in any department, we would like you to come. Like, because we've asked before, a Sunday plus one. So a part of your walk, do you know that Sundays are not enough? We usually dry out about Wednesday, and then we come scraping it together to try and get here for Sunday. So we ask, like, for good Christian health for your walk, a Sunday plus one, something. It can be meeting with somebody. It has to be, you know, just something that's going to feed you. And so that's why we do the Tuesday night prayer. But that, uh, not this Tuesday, the following Tuesday, if that could be your one a month, make that the one. Darren and I have decided, and the Holy Ghost, that we're going to lay hands on every person that comes here. We're just going to bless you. We're going to anoint you. We're going to believe healing for you. A lot of times, everyone who serves here, they actually don't get a lot of time to get prayed for. Did you know that? Because they're so busy serving everybody. So especially if you serve in any department, please come on the last Tuesday of the month. You can come any Tuesday. But we have purpose that we're going to lay hands on everyone and their dog. You shouldn't bring your dog because we do have some allergies. But we'll lay hands on you first so the allergies go. And if we need to bless your dog, we will bless your dog. Right? So that's Tuesdays. Um, Also, I have been talking and will continue September 8 and 9. We have Nicholas and Jasmine Robinson from Florida. They're doing a Jesus Saves Canada tour, and they're coming to Lac La Biche. And so um, they're coming here. They're going to do the Sunday morning, a Sunday evening, and a Monday night, which is going to be awesome. We have a marriage conference, which should be really good to invest in your marriage. You know that if your marriage is in a rough place, it's hard to ask for help there. You can, but before you get to the rough place, invest in your marriage. Invest in some things that are helpful. Invest in a holiday. Invest in each other. Amen? Amen. I believe that is all. We have our toddler's class is going to be starting September 8 because we have so many little people that uh, we're thrilled to that we have babies on the way so this is a fruitful church hallelujah yeah there we go we can release our kids five to ten four ish miss amanda is like amazing with all ages but we do ask for that age and just we'll collect our offering Father, bless this church. I pray that this church would not grow weary in doing good. And Lord, I thank you that even at this offering, there is a season, Lord, for sowing. There is a season, God, where we reap and there's a great harvest. So Lord, whatever season this church is in and these people are in, God, I thank you that we don't grow weary in doing good. So I want to speak over this church right now that there is a season To everything, there is a season. God, there is a season to sow and there's a season to reap. But Lord, I'm just aware in the last days, in the last times, Lord, and we've got to be getting close. In the last days, the reaper will overtake the sower. God, that's pretty cool. So Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you, God, for uh, the seasons of sowing and reaping. But to you brings belongs the increase. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Can we give the worship team a hand, please? Adrian and Ashley, you are awesome. So, Father, thank you for opening up our understanding today. And again, Lord, um, without vision or revelation, God, people perish. And I don't think it happens all at once, but it does slowly. Uh, Father, I thank you that we're in a season right now 
that it's available for wisdom, understanding, and revelation. And so I pray today that you would grant us the same. Would you open up our understanding, that we would get revelation, that it would be not difficult, but simple today. In Jesus' name. Um, we've been sharing on, actually for the last probably three weeks, on the anointing. And just the revelation with that. For you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. And then Isaiah was speaking and saying this. Actually that anointing can break the yoke. Bondages, whatever that thing is. That anointing is so strong that it can come upon you. If it's physical, praise the Lord. If it's spiritual, praise the Lord. If it's in the soul, that anointing can break that as well. And when you mix... That anointing with faith, you have a miracle, which we all love so much. Amen? Um, and I was just chatting with Angie, and she, we were just talking about agreement, the power of agreement, the power of friendship. And she started to chat with me, and, and she's got a, a pretty good handle on a good teaching on friendship. So I thought, well, why don't I partner with my wife today, and I'm going to ask her to come and to speak and to share on agreement and on friendship. So would you welcome Angie, please? So God, thank you for your anointing, your grace, your peace, and that Angie just steps into it. Yes. And Lord, thank you for revelation today. Open up the eyes of our understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm back again. See how I did that, did announcements, and then came back? So there are some things um, I think Darren was bumping into, and they're really good. So I just need to loosen up things a little bit. So from this side, I would like you to say, good God almighty. Oh, my. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to conduct you, okay, on three. One, two, three. Okay. Now on this side, we need an Amen. One, two, three. Amen. Okay. We're going to get this. I know we are. It's going to... Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Amen. One more time. One, two, three. Oh, guys. So, all right. Let's switch it up. Let's try over here. We're going to do good God Almighty because they need to hear it on that side. Praying for this side. Okay, so on three. One, two, three. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. And over here, we're going to do the amen. On three. One, two, three. Amen. With a smile. One more time. I want you to say this as well. With a smile, okay? One, two, three. Good God Almighty. He is. And on this side, one, two, three. Amen. Okay. Now, so that just shifts things a little bit. You didn't just fall into church. God has a beautiful plan for you. Amen? Amen. So the message about friendship is terrible. There's good friends and there's bad friends, right? There's good spirits, we'll call that, and there's bad spirits. Often it's not the people. It's out of what's happened in their life. That's made them terrible. Agreed? And so Darren's been talking a lot about covenant from the beginning of the year into anointing. And this message I was watching on Instagram by this martial arts guy. I was so inspired. Yeah, I'm going to share it with you. And so out of that, it's made me question, what's a friend and why do we need them? And there's usually like my arms crossed because I don't really want friends. I don't want the friends that hurt you. I don't want the friends that use you. I don't want the friends that manipulate you. But I have a need for a friend. First of all, who's the first friend that we should have? Totally. You can't be a good friend to anybody else if you do not have him first. That's the first friendship you have to foster. And I was thinking about even with the disciples, they were with him for two and a half years before they did anything for him. They just hung with him, hung out with him, had dinner with him, traveled with him, road trips. 
They didn't do anything, but they learned him. They grew in friendship. And we know that there's three, Peter, James, and John, that grew as an intimate friend because they spent time with him. He's seen their character. Uh, that's, that's a part for me, I think, um, in the early years. I don't think I really wanted a friend with Jesus. I wanted to get it from other people, which made my marriage super difficult because I expected him to be Jesus. I expected him to be the everything. I basically set him up to fail because I wanted him to be what Jesus is. So now that we've got that straight, Jesus is my best friend. And if you don't think he is, the first time your spouse makes you angry, you'll be like, oh yeah, Jesus, you're number one. <laughs> you are clearly number one. You are easily number one. And then Darren is my best friend after that. But what, I'm going to get to the message of the martial arts guy, but I want to talk about, I had a dream. I had a dream. Yeah. But this dream was, I shared it at our Tuesday prayer night. And Darren and I were going somewhere, I don't know where, but it was a WestJet. So I was like, where are you going? We're going to WestJet. We're going to WestJet. And our bags were packed, which is awesome, because if we're not prepared for something, it comes out in my dreams, and we can never find our passports, or we can never do any of that stuff. So our bags, where are we going? We're going to WestJet. And we're, at, we're WestJet. We're just going to WestJet. It's all it said. So God bless WestJet. I don't know what that was all about. And then we went, and I had the passports, but I had three passports. And I didn't know why I had three. And there was Darren's and mine. And then there was, I call it a little ugly man. Now this has nothing to do with the looks of a person. It had to do with this little sneaky thing that would hide behind people, but I was carrying its passport. So it could have passage onto the airplane. It could go wherever I wanted to go because I carried its passport with me. So I woke up. Darren and I having our morning coffee, and I'm telling him about this dream. And he said to me, he's like, that little man is poverty. And as I, as I think about it, it's so many more things. It's religion. It's an old way. It's an old way of thinking. It's something that I carried, and I actually had the passport for it. It is not my friend. And it would sneak. No one else would see it, but it would sneak. And they'd say, well, oh, well, there's that. I don't know where it went now. And I, I would look for this. And it's like, why is this little man so ugly? There's just an ugliness to the dark things of us. And so we tore up, canceled the passport. We took authority over it. And he said, no longer do you have passage to travel with me. You will not go where I'm going. You will not stay where I'm staying. You are an enemy of Almighty God and of me. Therefore, you must go in Jesus' name. Amen? Many times when Darren and I do deliverance, you'll hear us say a lot, it's like, you're not my friend. Uh, have you guys heard us say that before? Would you, it's just breaking agreement because there's things in our life where we just think that that's the way it's supposed to be. Maybe you've been victimized in your life. Just... You didn't ask for it. It just happened. All of a sudden, you find yourself holding hands with trauma, holding, your, holding hands with that victim, and you feel that way every time. But then Jesus comes on the scene, and you know what he does? He says, friends off. He's like, that's not your friend. I'm your friend. And so this message, I think it's kind of, it's out of many different areas. So uh, Proverbs 18.24 there are things today that, if you're open, I believe that that ugly friend of loneliness and insecurity will leave you today. I believe that if you're open to really do a personal inventory, that you can actually stack the deck in your favor in the name of Jesus. You can look for friends in your life that will add to you, and you will quickly see the friends that rob, rob you. Okay, so Proverbs 18.24. Oh, sorry, Bernie. Um, yeah, okay. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. Oops. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now that friend is speaking about Jesus. He's the one that he says in his word, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Has anyone ever been betrayed by a friend? 
Uh, rather, has anyone never been betrayed by a friend? Eh, no, you have, and it shapes us, and it hurts us. But when your first friendship is in place with Jesus, and you know that no matter what, he is never going to leave nor forsake, changes everything. You just have the resolve to do whatever you need to do in life. Even in marriage, we were talking about um, covenant. We'll get to that good one. Yeah. Um, so let's just go right into that. So why do we even need friends, right? They're just so much work. You got to call them. You got to be nice to them. You got to share something with them. You have to ignore them. You have to ghost them. You have to cut them out of your friend list. You have to avoid them in the grocery store if you're not on good terms. Or, <laughs> I, or, <laughs> Or you could actually get good friends. And when I was doing some research, I'll tell you what, if you guys have that Bible app, just do a search on choosing good friends. It's, it's not complicated. You know what? When I, when I type in choosing good friends, you know what comes up? Elementary stuff on how to help kids choose good friends. So when your little friend's in school, it's pretty topical. It's pretty innocent. Yes, there's bullying. But then there's something that happens when we become adults. And we somehow think, well, I don't know how to make friends. Or I don't need friends. Or I don't want friends. And you find yourself in a place of isolation and loneliness, which northern communities are notorious for. I won't even ask for everyone to put your hand up, but I'm sure everyone here has experienced some kind of loneliness, even in a crowd of people. It just happens that way. So why do we need friends? Because... Greater love has no one than this, than someone lay down his life for his friends. That's John 15, 13. So when Jesus commands us to love one another as he has loved us, he is calling us into friendship and commanding us into it. Now, instantly when I say those words, I think of all the awkward people in my life. Because, I don't know, maybe that's just what I do. And it's like, you have to love everyone. It's like, oh, Everyone? everyone, really, I automatically go to who is the greatest threat to me in that moment. That's out of woundedness. Yeah. Boom. So why do we need friends? Because we can't do life on our own. You can do it on your own for a while, but if you want to see what it looks like, go to a senior's home for someone who has felt like they've been alone all their life, and they will be grumpy and miserable and that should be our role model to not be that. God bless them and help them. But a life full of isolation and independence, it doesn't lead down a good road for you. But we're going to learn the right way today. Are you ready? Okay. So a few biblical friendships. This is for you to study. I was just thinking about them. Ruth and Naomi. If you know the story, just think about it, like the dynamics of it. Uh, a young widow stays with his, her mother-in-law, covenants with her. Where you go, I go. Where you die, I die. That kind of friendship. David and Jonathan, oh my goodness. Jonathan turned on his own father because he knew David was to be king. He left, just think about, just try and think about some of the things. I mean, you're not going to get all of this in today because this is like several weeks but they're things to think about. Abraham and Lot. Paul and Timothy. Um, Abraham is called the friend of God. Jesus was called the friend of sinners. In the best way. They meant it rudely. But he is. God spoke face to face with Moses as a man does to his friend. These are some quotes that I just picked up. That they're too good. Like I, I just They're too good. One is... Um, Having friends, see, you do need friends. Like whoever just said that, you totally need friends. Your spouse should be your friend, not always. There, Darren is not my shopping buddy. He's just not. <laughs> Rachel is my shopping buddy. Jaden, my daughter, my girls are my shopping buddies. They, if I expect this from this man, there's going to be a manifestation. Now, he's great and wonderful, but... We have learned if there's a Canadian tire close to a winner's, we've got to win. So, <laughs> but he can't be that for me. And that would be wrong of me to put that on him. That's a disaster. 
So having friends is a fundamental element of ordinary life. Choosing the right friends is an essential factor for abundant life. Did you hear that? I'm going to say it again. Having friends is a fundamental element of ordinary life. Choosing right friends is an essential factor for an abundant life. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. That's 1 Corinthians. Uh, when Darren and I first turned to the Lord, we were weekend alcoholics, and so we were poor, and so everything we drank, we invested in or bought, we had to drink it all, and we just did that over and over and over. And then Darren and I met Jesus personally in our living room, and we had been searching for a hole that only God can fill. Alcohol couldn't fill it, our friend group couldn't fill it, our family couldn't fill it, nothing was, and, and that was how we gave our hearts to the Lord. And so we had to, at that time, make an abrupt change in our life. Looking back, we regret some of the abruptness partially. We had to turn away from all the things that would just pull us back into a life of comfort. So passports, yeah, we didn't know how to have good uh, relationships with people outside of alcohol. So it just, that would be it. They were just drinking friends, even our family. Our family, it would be always just around alcohol. So when we had stopped drinking, you find out, well, we actually don't have a lot in common. The things that I, um, God has really blessed us in a way that we've been able to go back and mend some of those friendships. But when the word says that bad company will corrupt you, he's not telling you because he wants you to reject people. He just knows that our own weaknesses, we're not able to do it on our own. And so I know that that's difficult, um, but if Jesus is in the number one spot in your life, he'll make it easy for you. And he'll show you. And it, you know what's amazing is your friends around you mostly want to see you succeed. Mostly. Some want to pull you down if you start succeeding too much because of their own insecurities. That's all. But mostly, people are kind. We're just a little bit broken and make some wrong choices. Okay, so here's just some quotes. Friends do not gossip or listen to gossip, allowing it to hurt the friendship. That's Proverbs 16, 28. Friends forgive each other and help each other in difficulties. That's Colossians 3, 13. Friends stick around even when things get difficult being reliable. That's Proverbs 18, 24 in another version. Um, friends come and go. This is what the message says for that Proverbs 18, 24. Friends come and friends go, but a true friend sticks by you like family. So there are seasonal friends. There are friends for a season where someone can actually be a help to you for that season, and then they might be gone. And that's okay. Um, okay, I'm going to get right to the, the meat. Say, good God Almighty. Oh, my Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. He jumped it. He called it. He led through that. Okay, so this military veteran, um, he, uh, he reaches out to other veterans through jujitsu because he's actually trying to combat suicide among veterans and depression and hopelessness. It's really cool, and he's, uh, he's like this big, rough guy that's like MMA, jujitsu, martial arts. So he's scary. So when he talks, you listen. <coughs> so he says, these are the top five friends you need in your life. Okay, so this is where we're going to do an inventory. The first friend, I'm going to go through them again. I'll do them once. If you're writing it down, then I'll go through again. The first friend is a covenant friend. This is your ride or die friend. This is the person who is always there for you. That's your covenant friend. There's a spiritual friend. This is the friend that prays for you, gives you spiritual advice. This one is hard to come by. It's called a confidant. Who do you go to when you have life decisions? Who can you share your wins with? Sometimes you can't share wins with them. This is his words. Because they get jealous of your wins. He, his example is like, hey, I made a million bucks this week at, to his friend. And his friend's like, that's awesome. Good for you. Celebrated him. What's next? So I, I say these things because these are roles available in our own life, but they're also roles that you can be for somebody else. 
And so that's why we need to do an inventory. And I'm pretty sure that we're going to find some lack. And now one person can fill most of these, but not all of these. I mean, Jesus can fill all of them. Okay, so that's covenant friend, spiritual friend, confidant, hospital friend. This one cares for your well-being. They don't care how you're doing at work or how you're doing. They want to know, how's your heart? Like, are you doing okay? You, the person. That's your hospital friend, and we all need one or two or three. <laughs> and then this one is one of my favorites. He calls it the hitman friend. Yeah. <laughs> And he says, this one is like, hey, some things went down. They don't ask any questions. They grab a bat and roll out. Now, do you know that we need these things in our life? So he's speaking them, like his audience that he's speaking to is military veterans. We need these same things inside the church. And do you know that you can get all of these things in this room right now? You can. But not everybody is going to fill every role. And it's wrong of us to put a wrong role onto somebody. Just get over the thing of thinking that there's a perfect best friend. But there is something. I was given advice early in life. And it's like you can find one thing you enjoy about every person, even the most irritating one. You can find one thing that you enjoy. Stay there. Celebrate that. I, I have friends in my life that I can laugh with. I mean laugh like, wet your knickers kind of laugh and it's so foolish there's no real substance to it other than the laugh she's my go-to there's others I won't get a laugh out of her at all but if I need to pray and warfare come in with me she's the one I absolutely know who I can call for a few of these the hitman one I do have a hitman friend <clears throat> and she needs more of Jesus because she will come with the bat and she will take your knees out yeah, she's the one. Oh, I love her so much. She's my little friend from grade two. Taught me all my cuss words in grade two. It's like, hmm. she's the best friend to have. And she'll, if people are driving too fast on her street, she'll run out in her house coat and swing at them. Yeah, she will. Yeah, she's scary and she's just a, and she's saved. She's saved. Do you know that if you're saved, you can still swing a bat? Hmm. It's just not at people anymore. It's at the demonic. Amen? So these are the friends that you need. So just doing an inventory, a covenant friend, that's your ride or die friend. Okay? This person is always there for you. They don't judge you. They're there for you. When you screw up, and you will, when you do something wrong, you know what? They're going to actually see how much you've already invested. They're going to see your character and know, hold on, like this is a bad day. This is totally out of your character. And they're going to love you through it. That's your covenant friend. Spiritual friend, that's the one that prays for you, gives you spiritual advice. Your confidant, that's the one you share your wins with. That they don't get jealous of you, but they totally encourage you. Go for it. Push yourself. Don't get stuck there. What? Go for two million. I know you can do it. Right? Yeah. Hospital friend, cares for you your heart, your, your person cares for you, the absolute, your spirit, soul, and body, and the hitman friend. So if you have two or three, um, first of all, if you have two or three that are on this list, you're blessed. If you have uh, maybe a friend that holds a couple of these belts, I'll, I'll call them belts, then you need to let them know that you appreciate their voice in your life and if you don't have people here, and even his suggestion, is that start putting capital into other people to be that rule. Start investing in people around you by spending time with them, by getting to know them. You also can be these things for people. Yeah, be that. Um, You know, the hard part, and I've been telling Darren, you know when we do talk a lot, and it seems like we tell people we talk a lot, but we talk every day. You know, there are some things that are obstacles to friendships, and one is that there's fear of getting hurt again. This is where Jesus comes in, and he can help you with that. Like, he sees everything. Did not the blood of Cain, who killed who? Cain killed Abel? Abel killed Cain. Yeah, did not Abel's blood cry out to God. The wounds that you have are real. 
but they don't need to stay with the passport. It might be time to give up some things. It might be to get past and just forgive and release. And what that looks like is trusting God. And then to have friends, you've got to be friendly. Proverbs 18, 24, again, you have to be friendly. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Here's the thing. You're not going to know what role you can be in somebody's life until you step out. You'll probably very quickly find out the role that you're not meant to fill. Praise God. If you just need a laughing friend, have a look. and It's like, who can I count on? When the rubber hits the road and there's all kinds of calamity, who do you call? Who can you call? Who's there for you? Who are you there for? I think that these are things... Um, I think these are things that will help us to be who God wants us to be. Do you know how we hear about being the family? You've got to be the family of God. And it just seems so lame sometimes. I think because these things aren't in place. I don't know if we know how to be friendly. Um, I remember somebody speaking up here that they had been so blessed. And they were sharing as part of a testimony. It was a lot of years ago. And it was like, you know, we were so blessed. But then right away he changed it. It's like, but there's not enough for everyone. I, I, it's just enough for my family. And basically what he was saying is, we got blessed by something, but I don't want you to come and ask me for money. Like, please don't. So he'd clearly been abused in finances. Things that stop us from being friends is pride. I don't need anyone. Jesus is enough. He is enough. Jesus is enough. But guess what? Jesus had friends. He modeled it. He showed us how to do that. He also showed us what it's like to have Judas. He knows what it's like to be betrayed by a kiss. But he knows how to survive it. So there are things, so Darren and I, uh, we try to create things that will foster friendship for you. We don't ever want anyone to come to church and get hammered or beat on, but we want coffee area. And I, it, there's something that... We, in here, we can talk about God and everything, but when we go out in the coffee area, why does it go to the weather? <laughs> you, can go, you can go down anywhere and talk about the weather. This is the house of God, and you are the children of God. And I would encourage you, start having some God talks. What's God speaking to you? What are you reading in the Bible? Do you know what else that's going to do? It's going to put a draw on you. We, our little babysitter, um, Darren would always ask her, what's God speaking to you? And she's so driven, and she, she didn't have an answer once. And she says, and it's still part of her testimony, she's like, Pastor Darren asked me that, and I knew next time I'm going to have an answer. So when she was babysitting, she's like, okay, God, what are you speaking quickly? And it could be in the car on the way, but it put a draw on her to say, God, what are you speaking? Why not do that with someone here? Not a test, not to embarrass anybody, because you care. And because we're believers, not just on Sunday morning, every day of the week. There's probably people in your world, in your workplace, that they know who you are. And if stuff goes down, you might be the hitman that they're calling. Bring your bat and roll out, I need help. And you'll come out there and you'll start swinging the name of Jesus. And we'll start seeing people get set free. Yeah. Yeah. That's this season. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, come. I do want to speak that. That's now. That's this season now. I spend one afternoon watching the news, and you will see how volatile this world is at this moment. How everyone stay away, how everyone... This is God's season now where he's calling his kids forward. Seriously. Um, and if you're kind of thinking... Why is she talking about all this stuff? I mean, it's fun. It's kind of cute and stuff. No, no, no. Can you, yeah. Open up your, your apps or your Bible or your phone to go to Matthew 18, please. I want to show you something. No, you stay. You're, you're going to continue. You're doing great. So Matthew 18 actually starts um, by saying this tremendous authority. Whatever you bind will be bound. Whatever you loose will be loosed. But then he goes into this. 
I say to you that if two of you agree, two. Now, Angie's laid down five different types of friends. And, it, and if you're thinking, well, it's kind of entertaining, but why? Because if you do something which God calls agreement, you will actually tap into something that he's done even before there was creation. Say Father. Say Son. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit hovered over this earth. God spoke with Jesus and something happened. They all came into agreement, all three. And as they did, there was this explosion of creation and then he gave that power to us. He says, I'm going to give you the same thing. It's a creative force, and if you speak it, it will create. So look at this. If two of you agree concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. That is called friendship. Rachel, can you put up the word? Uh, I think I gave you, did I I send it to you? What? um, Did you not type it up? Ah, there it is. That's what agree means. Symphonio which is symphony, to sound together, to be in unison together, in accord together, to harmonize with together. That's what friends do when just two people come and agree. That's what, exactly what she's talking about. There is this power, this anointing that is released and lives are changed. Amen? Amen. You're doing awesome, by the way. Keep going. All right. Okay. So I think that probably the number of Facebook friends is really not accurate, is it? (laughs) Yeah, I have a lot of Facebook friends. Thank you, Facebook. Welcome our Facebook people on. I think there's actually something that, this is the part where you take away from this, is you need to do an inventory of what's allowed and what's not allowed. And we, we've talked about um, on Tuesday night where who is Jesus to you? Well, some say he's father, some say he's friend, some say he's comforter. These are really, really good questions to ask yourself because when you ask them, you'll get an answer and you'll see. Chances are you're not very friendly. Well, really, that's what happens. If you just don't want friends, it, it, you don't want to be friendly, or the insecurity, if anyone gets too close to me and they find out what I'm really all about, they're gone, fear of rejection. Darren and I used to, good God almighty, amen. So yeah, I was the person that I thought, well, if these church people are going to judge me because they're all basically a bunch of hypocrites and holier and thou and better than me, which was the outward, my face speaking inside, I felt so like they're going to reject me if they find out. So I thought, well, I might as well provoke rejection. Sweatpants with holes in them, the kind that are real, not paid for. And I'd stand on the front. I'd have my cigarette on the church. And then I'd flick it off, and then I would go in. It's so funny. Do you know that nobody judged me? I just was waiting for them to judge me, because if they judged me, I could justify flipping them the bird and never coming back to that place again. But they didn't do it. They didn't do it because I was trying to sabotage it, right? Pulling it all back, I was just trying to sabotage anything. Darren has talked many times about he would wave his fist at God and think, I can be more fake than these people. Either you show yourself or I'm out. So some would be like, oh oh my gosh, you can never talk to God. God is amazing and he understands you. And did he laugh when I flicked my cigarette? Maybe. Am I embarrassed of it? Absolutely. Am I very cautious with other people when I see you coming in with your holy sweatpants and your cigarette flicking off? I know what you're all about. I know what you're all about, but Jesus knows what you're all about. Pride is something that God can work with. Lord, I don't know what to do with this. I feel so so guarded. I'm even guarded from you. I don't even know if I want to be a friend with you. I like sinning. Sinning is good for a season. It's fun. Fun. The scars are brutal. It reaps death. But while you're in it, fun. Good old stories that seem it, but if you look back with the eyes of the Lord, danger, danger, danger. 
So there's things in the house of God that you can do, and they're sitting right beside you. And learn how to pray for somebody. Learn how to care for them without being religious and stuffy. Meet them right where they are. Are you doing okay? Can I pray for you today? So I sense a few things in the heart of God, and it's betrayal and brokenness. And it's a fortress, and it's a wall. And it's filled with every bad report, every failed thing. It, it's almost become like a plumb line for your life. I'm here to tell you today that it's a lie, and it can be removed today in Jesus' name if you'll trust him. The only measuring stick that you have is the word of God. Every other one needs to be broken. And we do need friends. Not everybody in this room is going to be a good friend to you, and nor should you expect that. But you could start somewhere. If you don't have, just through the list, if you don't have a covenant friend, if you don't have a spiritual friend or a confidant or a hospital friend or a hitman friend, then consider it. Like, do a real inventory. Take this week and think about it. Who actually adds to my life, and who am I shields up around? Who robs from me? Yeah. I'm listening. Will you close your eyes a minute? Lord, there's nothing to see here except Adrian coming up to the keyboard. <laughs> Lord, we're hearing some things today that are so basic, and I'm so thankful. But you see every heart here and the hearts online and even those who will join in at a later time. You see, when you say the word friend, what resonates in their heart. And Lord, where betrayal Victimhood, trauma, just straight up fear. Fear of exposure. If people really knew who I was, well, God, you do. But I just shine your light on these lies of the enemy that hold your people captive. Where they've been betrayed, Lord, you know what it's like to be betrayed. Judas betrayed you with a kiss, Lord. And he sold you for 30 pieces of silver. We know what that feels like. We confess to you that we don't know how to be a good friend or to how maybe to recognize one when it comes our way. We've been mishandled and we've mishandled people. We've been disrespected and we've disrespected people. I'm sorry, Lord. On behalf of all the hearts in this room and online, I'm sorry, Lord. We confess to you that some of this Christian walk, it's sure hard. The world is pretty harsh, Lord. You know it. You know the things that we do to protect ourselves. You know where even, even right now to lower any shield is imminent death. You said that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but you have come that we would have abundant life. I ask, Lord, for your anointing to lower the shields of self-protection. Even when there's loneliness, Lord. I hear the words, I don't even know how to be a friend or it just seems lame. Lord, where we have a wrong idea, we just confess that as sin to you. Where we don't understand things. You said anyone who lacks wisdom to ask for it. We need wisdom, Lord. 
There's places in our life where you are not fully present. And that's not a you thing, that's an us thing. But without your anointing, we don't even know how to do that. So by faith, Lord, we're going to trust you. We're going to lower self-protection. We're going to cancel passports that we carry with us that just hurt us. Every sneaky assignment. We're going to actually do that today. Um, I think that there is a great opportunity. When I knew that Angie was going to be speaking, I'm like very sensitive to what's going on spiritually and uh, there's easy days and there's some days that are actually difficult you feel resistance and today's one of those days where there's some resistance I, I want to tell you something there's something that's glorified in Alberta and it's called the northern spirit and that spirit is we can go and we can do anything we don't need anyone else and it accomplishes something if, if what you're after is um, production or achievement it accomplishes it but the northern spirit also does this too i don't need anyone else oh you can come with me if you want just don't get too close i'll do it myself and while angie's speaking i'm thinking of that going man that passport so jesus says this and man the, the dude's a Jesus is about to die. And go and tells tells his boys this, which he's telling us. He says, if you think this is about servanthood, and if this is about you better do this and do that, and you better follow all this, well, I want to tell you, I no longer call you servants. But now I call you friends. Because everything that the Father is doing and he tells me, I make it known to you. And you're my friends. If you would go this distance with me, and if you do what I say to do, invites us in. I think as a church, uh, we're on the precipice of, of a tremendous victory. And if you go, well, who will protect me? Well, he will. Uh, I think of the Lord going, why, why, do you, why do you need vengeance for yourself? In fact, he says this, why don't you rather let yourself be wronged so that I can defend you? So that I can lift you up and bless you? Father, I think that there's a, an amazing opportunity here. And Lord, I think that you're extending your hand of fellowship and friendship to all of us. And Father, I, I just pray that even right now we would have the um, wisdom and understanding to know the season that we're in, to know the hour that we're in, and to know what you're calling us to. As the world says, get away, you're saying come closer. And so would you, would you stand with me today, please? I don't, I don't know um, if you're carrying a passport or 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 what that is but I do know that there's a place where you just kind of surrender and put down your guns and just go Lord I, I just choose to trust you so if we could say this together say Jesus I believe you're God's son I also believe according to your word you're calling me in to be your friend I choose today to leave behind any passports that hold me back that I thought was my strength, but it's not. We're just going to name some things here. Say, Northern Spirit, the Lord rebuke you. You're not my friend. Now hold on just a moment. Hold on just a moment. I mean, if we're taking account of stuff, can you believe the distractions today already? 
helicopters going over, things happening, trains, everything. Anything to get you distracted, anything so that you do not step into God's fulfillment for you. Say bitterness. You're not my friend. Vengeance. You're not my friend. Ah, loneliness. You're not my friend. Addictions. You're not my friend. You know, I couldn't be a friend unless I was drunk. And we have friends over Friday night, Saturday night. Didn't go to church, didn't know Jesus. So usually on Sunday too, I'd be with my friends. And I could not be a friend unless I was drunk. Woo! Jesus, would you just come in and inhabit right now every person, every person here. Lord, there is some awesome things, some funny things, some strong things that were said. But even now, on a precipice, even now in a season of great change, Lord, I just believe that you are calling us to be friends. You never stopped. But there's a season when we have revelation and understand what you're calling us to. So Lord, I just thank you for this invitation right now. And let it be revelation to each one of us. Greater love has no one than he who would give his life for a friend. This is your church. This is what you're calling us to. Even right now. So Lord, I thank you for the beginning of this. Even now. Strongholds coming down. Passports being ripped up in Jesus' name. And people just stepping forward. Even like Sylvia spoke a couple weeks ago. Just throwing off the burden. Throwing off the backpack and the weight of stuff that we were never meant to carry. You know, if you suck at being a friend, I bet you're good at being one of those friends. I can't do all five, but I could probably do one really well. So let's do that, amen? In Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you'll take the inventory and check. And it's okay if it stings a little bit. Jesus will take you. He'll take you all the way through it. But as far as people in this house, there isn't anyone that's going to fill that role automatically when you walk out the doors. But you can find one thing in every person, one thing that you can enjoy. And that one thing might lead to two things. It might lead to three things. It might only ever stay one thing. But start there. Look for it in each other. Uh, Just thinking, just like this. If you needed, there's something going on, and you needed, like, prayer, Sylvia would just kill devils in prayer for you. And she would take it so, so seriously. If, if, if I needed something, in fact, I asked Julie this morning, if I needed, hey, Julie, could you make this for me? And she's like, yeah, I, I could do it. And you know what? She will do it. She, no joke. If you need, if you need like, depth, and, and you need somebody to care about your heart, talk to Melody. Spend five minutes with her. She will look into your eyes. Her head will probably turn a little bit like this, and she will ask you how you're doing. If, if you need to laugh and you need to uh, uh, enter a little bit of a different world and feel like you've been uh, hospitality taken care of, go see Morgan and Colleen. You, you will feel like 20 generations ago, family has just encountered you. Ah, I could just go through here. Yeah. Yeah. Sylvia's not going to be the hitman for everybody, but she is for us. That's the place that she's walked in and earned and uh, is in covenant with us. Find yours. Find yours. That's it. They're in your world. They're all around you. Find them. You're worthy of having a friend. You're worthy of being fought for. You totally are. Jesus went to the cross. And if you can have one friend through all life, well, praise God. But I'm giving you permission. You can find one thing about any person in here that you can enjoy. Like coffee. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. All right, let's do something just because let's break the awkwardness. Just look at someone beside you. Just shake their hand. Say, hi, friend. Just try it out. Just try to do it. You can do it. You can do it. Just say, hi, friend. Good job. Now go out into the coffee area, enjoy each other, and look at each other awkwardly and just go, so, and just wait for the conversation to start. <laughs>